I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by Rafael Duarte and uh, Pablo Tebas. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So, how might uh, uh, blood and marrow transportation uh, help with HIV? Well, HIV is, is a virus that uses specific receptors in the CD4 T cells. And we know also that people without one of the co-receptors that the virus uses, CCR5, that people that lack this co-receptor, they don't get infected with HIV. So if you get transplanted a bone marrow from somebody that doesn't have a co-receptor for HIV, HIV cannot replicate. And this is exactly what happened in, in the case that we have cured HIV in Germany. Give us some indication of where, it's, where we've seen successes. So the, there's a, a seminal pivotal uh, case, which is the case that, that Dr. Tebas was referring to, transplanted in Germany nearly a decade ago now, and in whom it's been confirmed that upon transplantation with CCR5 deficient uh, hematopoietic cells, the patient has remained off treatment and HIV free for, for many years now. So it's a functional cure uh, evidence that we have. So when people see those uh, results, there would be a, a, a lot of hope uh, in, in, involved, but what are some of the challenges that we would face? I think that the main challenge from the point of view of the allogeneic transplantation procedure is that it is, very, it is a rare event identifying a potential donor that is HLA compatible and at the same time has the, the CCR5 mutation that is necessary to confer resistance. That, uh, that prevalence is less than 1% in, in, in northern European population, so it would be extremely rare. Uh, we are trying to attempt additional efforts to identify stem cells that can be somewhat more versatile in transplantation and to use those as potential source of stem cells for transplantation with HIV patients and core blood would be the right platform to, to pursue in this sense. What are some of the other challenges? Well, I, I think the, there are the challenges of an allogenic bone marrow transplantation and the side effects of that and, the, and also the side effects of the medications involved in bone marrow transplantation. So, Hematologists expect a graft versus host disease, which is not because it's graft versus tumor activity, and that is a challenge in itself for patients that are otherwise healthy. We ongoing HIV infection control with antiretroviral medications. So this probably will work better instead of the allogenic bone marrow setting in the autologous bone marrow setting, and that's why we are trying to develop techniques to transplant the individual, his or her own cells, genetically modified. Talk to us a little bit about gene editing and how that might help. Well, there are the different techniques. The field is exploding very quickly. In the last few years, you can use thin finger nucleases, Talon and CRISPR uh, to remove this core receptor of HIV and that's what we have been doing. Some groups, like our group, has been doing it on mature T cells, so we collect CD4 T cells from the patient, we genetically modify in the lab, expand those cells and reinfuse them back into the patient and see if those cells live longer in the presence of HIV. And some people, like in the West Coast, Paula Cannon and, and the group at Seattle, they are working on doing that on autologous stem cells. Now we're here today at uh, the EBMT uh, conference. How can the EBMT community itself uh, help with these efforts? This requires a big collaboration between HIV specialists, virologists and, and, and infectious specialists and transplanters and hematologists. The society, the Hematology Transplant Society can uh, provide with the right indications for transplantation. We last year presented here the largest analysis of allogenic transplantation in HIV patients that there is, with over 100 patients being reported, and showed that is not only that it's a, a, a complex procedure, patients with HIV do have somewhat more complications as a result of allogenic transplantation than HIV negative individuals. So I think it is very important for the public to understand that this is a, a, a treatment uh, with complications that is only indicated in particular diseases, mostly hematological malignancies, and that is only HIV infected individuals with these malignancies that are eligible for this type of treatments. Well, thank you both very much indeed for taking the time to come and speak to us straight off a plane. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.